Hello and welcome to Eco Farm. This is episode two, and uh, we are at the store where we are about to buy or to increase the weight on our front weight. We've just bought a roller, and it is far, far too heavy for our little Hurleyman. So we've just increased the weight to be able to pull it down on the front. And as you can see there, without the weight, it just popped a wheelie. <laughs> they put the weight on and we're okay, we're ready to go. So we'll get back to the farm now and we'll go and roll that field that we've just planted. And then we'll get on to, we'll, we'll go for a bit of a rest and uh, we'll uh, get on to maize activities. So our first month has gone reasonably well. We've managed to to rework the dead field that was on the farm when we when we got it. Um, we still haven't bought ourselves a place to stay, but quite quite comfortable in the tent at the moment. No problem with that. We've planted some oats and just about to give it a bit of a roll get it up to as high a yielding field as possible yeah pulls it quite easily not a problem So I think for the next month we will concentrate on putting up some more fields. Going to keep them pretty small at this stage. Um, also we need to look at where we place them in terms of having number one easy access of course and number two making it easier for our Hurleyman to work on as much as possible. So we have to realize that it's only 132 horsepower. Well, technically speaking, of course, uh, um, electric vehicles won't be measured in horsepower, but we'll do that for ease of reference, just so that we know where we are. We've always w worked in horsepower, really, so make it easier to compare to whatever fossil fuel vehicle we might be using. Oh, looks like we've planned this exactly right in the event. There we go. That's that done. We'll go for a rest and we'll see you on the morrow as they say in the classics. I'll just get this parked up first but yeah. Yeah, and of course um, the electric vehicles are slightly lighter, they don't have the heavy engine in the front, um, they have fairly sizable motors on each wheel compared to say electric car motors of course, and the whole uh, front part where the engine would normally have been, oops, shouldn't try to open up that <laughs> implement in the shed, um, where the engine would be is pretty much taking up with batteries. it needs to be able to get any sort of working time out of it, it needs to be quite big. In any case, let's get ourselves a plow so that we can make some fields. Right, so it's 180 horsepower, so first of all, we're going to get that, and that's going to mean we're going to have to get ourselves a, a um, combustion engine tractor. So we'll go for the class. We don't also don't want to get anything too big because of course we need to compensate by planting trees for that. So we've gone with a medium sized tractor. It's gonna cost us seven thousand to lease. So already we're starting to incur expenses which we necessarily 
wouldn't have incurred. And to compensate for that, first of all, we need to go and plant a tree. So for every tractor that, or normally aspirated combustion engine tractor, we buy, we need to plant a tree. So um, because this is a small tractor, we need to plant one tree and that's the tree that we're going to be planting. They need to be large, fully developed trees, um, perhaps not ideal in terms of the fact that we're planting full trees, but it's got to be a disincentive to use um, fossil fuel tractors. So if we had bought a medium-sized tractor, we'd have had to plant two trees. And if we bought a large tractor, we'd have had to plant three trees. And for any really heavy equipment, so all the harvesters, forage harvesters and such like, plant three trees. Um, and then anything that is in the, in the medium-sized tractor range and trucks, etc., that sort of size vehicle, two trees, and then small tractors and cars and such type vehicles, one tree. We, if we get to the stage where we can't um, plant any more trees because there's too many on you, we will then institute a money, a money penalty. Um, by that time we'll know more or less how much it costs for each um, for each piece of equipment, or for each tree, should I say, three, two, one, etc. And um, we will then um, institute a money penalty, which we will have to pay. It's just a com to be a complete disincentive to use non-electric vehicles. Right, so while I was waffling on about how we going to pay for using what most of us would concern would would determine or would be thinking are the vehicles that we should be using and of course the vehicles that most of us like using the big big tractors and such like <laughs> certainly I do um, suddenly will become a little bit more expensive to <laughs> to use. It's fine. Right, so the first field I'm going to make is just utilizing up this flat area very close to the f to the original field. I want to give us a bit of working space between each field. We'll get it nice and squared up so that it's easy if we want to use workers at a later stage. Try and get it nice and square. Yeah. So it'll be a fairly long field. So we'll go just to the inside of that tree we can see on the right hand side there. And we will go down just about to the trees that you can see slightly to the left of the cab, right down at the bottom of the field there. Right. There we go. I'm always a bit painful when I first start setting up a field because I like to look around and see exactly where I'm going. Well, let's put it this way most of the time. So I know what's going to happen. Some, somewhere along the line I'm just going to be doing a field willy-nilly and people will say, Oh, look at that. He, he took so long to get himself on 90 degrees or 180 degrees or um, whatever it might be, 270 or 360 or whatever. Um, and now he's just gone and looks like a piece of string. <laughs> oh dear. In any case, we're off our first field. So we're going to do... I think I'm going to do 
maybe three or four fields to start with. Um, we've got lots of land. You know, as you see in the next couple of episodes, we've got plenty of land. Um, but at this point in time, I'm not 100% sure exactly how I'm going to be proceeding in terms of um, developing a diversified operation. Um, I don't want it just to be um, eco-friendly um, arable farm. It, m it must be mixed. We've got to try and supply the town with a reasonable mix of food and indeed services. So I think my thinking is that eventually we will utilize this area around the dam for a bit of recreation for the town, a place for people to go on a holiday, but that will be quite a way down the line because it's very expensive to set up. But I do want to do animals in some form so that we can be supplying some form of protein to the town. Of course the town can get um, food f from other sources um, but we want to be able to try and supply as much as we can. So I have a couple of plans that you'll see developing over the coming episodes of um, how we are going to diversify our, our product range. There we go, Bus busy tweaking ourselves to get as straight as possible. It probably doesn't really need to be that straight, but hey, sometimes I nerd out on these things. So this little class is working quite well with this size tractor. Uh, tractor. For this size tractor with this size plow. I like this plow because it's very easy to keep square. It does take a bit more power for, this, for the width that it's plowing. And it's a decent width, width come to think of it. You know, um, at this sort of power level, um, on normal plows, we would be most probably doing two and a half or three meters. And with this one, we've got six meters, so it does make it go a bit quicker. There we go. Let's square it off. So I do like to leave the one side when you're squaring off at the end. I do like to leave the one side there that I do slightly shorter than the other, and then go across the top to get it level or levelish. Another one of my little field creation quirks. So I'm using, of course, the little um, map on the bottom left-hand side. I know there's other ways I can do it, but I like doing it that way. <laughs> right, we'll get this filled in. So I'm not going to take too many times to go up and down. So still a relatively small field. But it's utilizing this area up front. So utilization, utilization of flat areas is kind of what I'm trying to do. I don't want to do too much landscaping in this series in terms of um, flattening out hills or such like to get absolutely flat areas. Um, it, would m it, it would mean that we need to use those areas for other things. Um, I'm not going to be too strict on that because it might limit us too much, I'm not sure just yet. But to start off with we'll try and use areas certainly for our arable um, encounters 
on fairly easy to work land. It doesn't mean it has to be 100% flat, but um, where we can work with, with reasonably small equipment. I also know that somewhere along the line I'm going to want to <laughs> use a nice big harvester again, so yeah, pretty sure that that'll come, but we'll have to pay. Right, I think we need to start a little bit further forward. We've also got to um, be cognizant of the fact that we will still have to We'll still have to um, leave room between the fields to drive around the farm for easy access. Yes, I don't know how everybody feels about. I don't want to open up too much of a can of worms, but. Um, about eco farming, and uh, we're going to, of course, still try because we're eco farming, try to be as um, well as organic as possible, is the word I was looking for because it kind of goes hand in hand to a large extent. Um, so we're not going to be using any, I think I must probably mentioned it before, any um, chemical based fertilizers. So we can use, of course, manure. We can use fertilizer that is made from plant material, if we can find anything like that. Um, I haven't really looked to see if there's anything plant based in terms of fertilizer. Um, of course, we're not going to be doing cattle in the series, so um, we won't have any slurry as such. Um, do, I have been thinking about pigs um, somewhere along the line, but I need to do a little bit more research on that and see whether that can go along, because I'd like to use them as a source of of manure of course and that will also mean that we can use up a lot of the straw that we would be producing with some of the arable crops so we try to use up everything as well to use everything that and all the byproducts that are created from the arable situation as well as the um, the farming of any animals so here we go again boring everybody with me trying to get at 90 degrees to the to the last plow but there we go yes yeah, so the other thing that has just occurred to me perhaps I should put it in the rules is that um, planting of the trees must also be dependent on um, on how many days you keep the vehicle so if we can't get say all the field creation done in in this one day because we're playing one day months so it's per month um, we're playing it um, at real-time speed so that we can try and get done what we would normally get done in a month and then we'll just rest when when the month's work is done and then of course change over to the next month which in this case will be May and if we find that we still need to um, utilize the tractor we'll have to 
balance out whether it would be cheaper to to return the vehicle it released at that particular time or whether it would be cheaper to pay for another planting of a tree or for obtaining a carbon credit as such. So we're just squaring off this field and we'll get that done. Yeah, so if anybody else has any ideas of how we can um, further enhance the gameplay of eco farming in this series, um, drop me a line in the in the comments, and um, we'll see where we can uh, we'll see where we can adapt the game or introduce it. I want to try and do as many methods as we can so likewise when we're building buildings I'm not going to just use solar panels. Right so of course we finished that field so I'm just jump cut to the third and final field that I want to do for the day. This is going to be a slightly bigger field. I'm also just feeling around for size of field that I feel is going to work because of course I could make huge huge fields on this area because um, we also own the land kind of between the trees the tree line on the left and the tree line at the top there um, so and it goes quite a way down so there's lots of potential for there um, there's also potential um, for working on I'll, I'll show you once we get to the top once we've done this up leg here and as you can see I'm also trying to fit the fields in between the trees that are that are on the land already as I did say we are not a we're not allowed or we're not going to cut any trees on the map so we have to try and fit our fields in between trees in the open areas and also in some cases we could incorporate the trees into things like an animal pen or such like um, but that's also for later right so this is a slightly bigger field i think we'll be able to get quite a long field between, between these trees and we'll have to cut across the two trees which are just going past the left hand side of the screen yeah so it's going to give us a reasonable size field I'm not too worried I don't want to get too close to the trees but um, I'm not too worried about leaving a huge amount of turning space because of course we can just plow our headlands or work headlands um, on the fields to make it a bit bit more interesting of course we've got so much land at the moment we could leave huge and I have left quite big spaces between the fields but we could leave huge spaces between the fields and all the implements are built to turn fantastically but Let's make it a little bit interesting in terms of having to work out how to work a field. Right now I'm busy planning my fields so that they don't require a lot of uh, planning and also to make it easier because we also want to employ some people over the course of the game as we get bigger, employ people from the town to come and work on the farm and regenerate the economy of the area as well. Yeah, so this gives you a kind of idea of the size of the field. We'll 
to square this off. Yeah, so compared to the other field, it's pretty big. But also, of course, to start off with, uh, small fields are better because when it comes to harvesting, we're definitely going to have to um, utilize um, uh, f well harvesters. Um, I know there's some that you can pull behind tractors, but um, I think we've got to be realistic and use proper harvesters and pay the carbon credits for that. Of course, technically speaking, we should be generating quite a few carbon credits by using the electric vehicles and supplying our own power, etc. But, um, yeah, we might consider that as we go down uh, the line. But for now, to make it a bit interesting um, and to make it a deterrent, we will continue with planting the trees. Right, so we've just about finished this field and that's going to be pretty much the fields that we're going to start with for now. And uh, yeah, pulling a bit heavy on this one, but not too bad, still up five, six, seven miles an hour. And that's that done. But I think that's where we're going to call it a day for this episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next episode. We'll just go and park this off. Yeah, do let me know what you think about the eco farming idea. Do you think we'll be able to make any reasonable money? Will we be able to grow the farm so that, of course, we can use loans? So, to start off, it would be a bit easier to get things done. But there will come a time when we've utilized our loan allocation. Thank you so much, and cheerio.